Hey there team, and welcome to the last episode of my Canadian Cannabis Road Trip. So let's start this off properly and light this bad boy up and talk about the last few days of my trip. Cheers. Mmm, beautiful flower. So, the last time when we left off, we were stopping at this little spot in San Diego to try and sleep, and we were woken up by the cops. So we had to leave and find another Walmart to crash in, because it seems like the Walmart parking lots are really the only safe place to sleep in your car. So that's exactly what we did. Really late at night, we pulled up at our McDonald's, we got comfortable, and we just crashed there. Because the next day, we were going to try and head off to Mexico. So we woke up the next day super groggy and tired and like a little bit antsy. Not the happiest, just because we didn't have a great sleep. So what we decided to do, where we, we were going to go to like a Starbucks charge all of our cell phones and just start researching how the heck do we get across the border we've never done it before especially crossing into mexico no clue what the rules are exactly what we have to do so we checked it the best way to cross the easiest way to cross and we decided we were just gonna walk across the border because just bringing all of our stuff with us made no sense. We just wanted to stay there for like a few hours to walk around. So we decided we were just going to drive up close to the border, be very careful not to cross the border, park our car, and then walk across the border so that we didn't have to go through all our stuff, make sure everything was okay, make sure we didn't have anything crazy. We just left everything in the car and we just crossed the border like that. So of course, just driving up to the border was super anxious because we didn't want to like miss our exit and get stuck at the border waiting in line. We did not want to do that. So we were just staring at our phones, making sure we went to the right place. Finally, we found our parking lot. So we pulled over, parked and started walking to the border. And it was freaking awesome. Immediately, we started seeing flags everywhere. We started seeing this huge fence that like you hear about it all the time, but I've never seen it in person. It was crazy to see it in person. And then we see this big Mexico sign that says this way to Mexico with this little hallway leading down. Very, very kind of sketchy looking hallway, but like that's where we needed to go. So that's where we went. So we walk through that border, looking right, there's cameras everywhere, there's security everywhere, and finally we get to the little desk where you write down all your information, you tell them why you're there, why you're visiting, what you're doing, and they finally let us in. Now I got this little card that, I mean, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know what it says, but I'll show you the top of it. I won't show you the rest because all my information is there. But look at that bad boy. We got this little card to let us enter and exit out of Mexico. Freaking awesome. So we took our little card, we took all of our water and our sweaters and our food, and we crossed into Tijuana, Mexico. And it was freaking awesome. Just such a cool experience. The second you cross the border, you can tell immediately you're in a new place. It, it, it looks different, the buildings are different, the, the, the colors are different, just everything is different. It was absolutely awesome. So we start walking around, looking around, beautiful colors, beautiful things for sale. There's masks, there's clothes, there's all these crazy things. It is absolutely awesome. And no one's speaking English anymore. Everything's done in Spanish. I, I, it was, I, I mean, it's so cool. So of course, 
we're in Mexico. We need to find some real authentic Mexican food. So we start walking around looking for some good food. Now, of course, we have no idea where we are. We have no idea where to go. So we're just walking up and down the streets, looking right, looking left, looking at our surroundings, all the locals walking around, the people shopping, the colors going on, just keeping an eye out for food. But on the way, we see all these cool uh, designs on the wall, all this cool graffiti going on, all these, like, it was, ah, oh, there was so much to look at. The cool buildings were beautiful, the people were beautiful. It was absolutely awesome. But we still hadn't found the food. We found a sex shop, we found this, like, 420 tagging on the wall. You know I had to take a picture of that, especially since I didn't have any flour on me, because we were crossing into Mexico, and of course, you do not bring anything with you when you cross the border. And finally, after walking around for a good hour, we found our first place to eat. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't amazing. I don't know exactly what it was, but it... It tasted just like a big cracker with wet dog food on it, so it definitely wasn't amazing. But at least we got to eat some food in Mexico, and the sauce they put on top was amazing. I definitely would have left that weird cracker and cold dog food aside and just eaten the sauce. Just a beautiful spicy green sauce. I wish I knew what that was because man was it good. So after eating a bit, we kept on walking. We saw some more weird tagging on the wall. We saw this awesome fancy dressed guy in this cool suit looking absolutely awesome and somewhat suspicious, not sure what he was up to. And the coolest thing we saw, I'm not 100% sure what they are, but I'm pretty sure we saw donkeys with painted zebra stripes on them and the people like standing next to them were trying to get tourists to take pictures with these weird donkey zebra things. Now I have no clue what this is. I've never heard of it before, but <laughs> it was absolutely awesome. I actually saw someone get up and take a picture with it. So it clearly works with some people, but I thought it was absolutely hilarious to just see a zebra on the side of the street in Tijuana, Mexico. Like, what the heck are you doing there? So at this point, it's getting a little late. We decide we're going to start heading back towards the border. And on the way, we find this awesome, like, indoor hallway shopping kind of building with beautiful colors and, like, these, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, balconies on the inside. And, like, I mean, I don't even just look at it. It is absolutely stunning. I've never seen anything like this. So we just walked around here, looked around, and it was absolutely beautiful in here. Again, I've never seen anything like this. Just awesome. Now, of course, before leaving, we had to get some churros, just a little bit of dessert to see exactly what a Mexican churro is like. And turns out... It's amazing. Fresh, beautiful. The guy gave us a great deal. I forget exactly what it was, but let's say he, he at first he wanted like 10 pesos. By the end of it, he gave us like double the amount for the same price. So I don't know if he was trying to rip us off at first, but in the end, we ended up getting tons of churros for a great price. So, I mean, who can complain? So we kept walking towards the border. We finally crossed towards the border and we hadn't smoked all day. It's been all day that we were in Mexico with no flour. So we went right to the car. We rolled us up a nice joint and then we went right back to the border on this side of the border, on the American side of the border. So we were still kosher and we lit up a joint standing on the American side of the border in San Diego, staring at Tijuana while the sun was going down. 
it was absolutely amazing just a beautiful experience a great way to end the day and it was just awesome so at this point we start heading towards vegas and stop at a rest stop in the mojave desert absolutely beautiful rest stop there was sand everywhere these huge beautiful birds flying around just an awesome place to stop and i woke up early in the morning and saw this awesome sunrise it was stunning right over the sand absolutely beautiful way to start off nevada i was so stoked to go to vegas and that's where we were going next so we're getting close to vegas and the first thing i see is the stadium that they're building for their football team i'm pretty sure not a hundred percent sure but just a beautiful huge stadium and then we start seeing the casinos first the mandalay bay massive casino we see this big sign for the blue man group then the bellagio sign points out with the cirque du soleil advertisement under it absolutely awesome we have officially made it we are in las vegas i mean i've always wanted to come here i'm not a big gambler or anything but i mean it's vegas huge buildings flashing lights all the sounds it's exactly what was promised just an awesome place to be so of course the first thing we do is walk around and start checking out the casinos and the first casino we went to i wrote it down here it is uh, the treasure island and i went immediately to the slots and i lost five dollars within like two seconds so to me that was a bad omen we left treasure island immediately because i figured i mean there's got to be some bad juju there's no way it's me it's got to be this place so we left there and we started just going from casino to casino looking around seeing what was there trying out the machines and i even kept a bunch of the vouchers here we went to the caesar's palace here i won one penny we went to the Venetian Palazzo, awesome spot. We went to the Wynn, of course we had to go to the Wynn. And then this is where we stayed, I believe, the Plaza Hotel and Casino. So those are going to be some of the casinos we went to, not all of them, of course. But we went to a bunch of casinos and they were all pretty much similar. Just huge buildings with tons of lights and tons of sound and tons of people. Just awesome walking through that place and pretty darn confusing. You can't really go from building to building like you would think back home. You kind of have to cross where they want you to cross and do big circles and roundabouts and go over ledges and things. So they definitely try and keep you away from the roads so that you're as safe as possible. I guess because there's so many tourists and drunk people walking around, you really got to be safe. But it did make for quite a lot of walking. So one thing that we weren't aware of because we were stupid and didn't research it is you're not allowed to smoke flour in public in Las Vegas. Now, I had no clue. For some reason, we just assumed that because you could buy flour in Las Vegas legally, that you're also able to smoke it in public legally. So that's what we did. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not allowed to do this. Now, we should have known we were getting a lot of looks from people, but I assumed it was just because our flowers smelt good or because we looked good. I have no idea why, but I did not put it together that we're not allowed to smoke flour in public in Las Vegas. So don't do what we did. We were very lucky and we didn't get in trouble, but that doesn't mean you won't get in trouble so be smarter than us don't smoke in public because you are not allowed in las vegas so of course we keep walking around we see the flamingo sign we see the awesome eiffel tower that they built and we just keep walking because i wanted to see the cool uh the the water show that they do i think it's at the bellagio not a hundred percent sure 
So we start walking towards it and we actually get there at the right time. The second we get there, it starts shooting up, the sound starts playing, everybody turns around and starts watching. It was so cool, exactly like you see in the movies. Just amazing, these like three-story water spouts shooting up in the air. It was awesome. Now, right before going to bed, we decided to hit a few more slot machines, and that was actually a great idea, because finally, I started winning. Now, I didn't win a crazy amount of money. I think I won like five bucks or something. I'll show the video now. What's still going up? <laughs> what? Hey, hey, five bucks. What's five up? Ah. But man, was it a blast. And to celebrate my nice new winnings, we went to White Castle. I've never been there before. I've seen the movie with Harold and Kumar, so we had to check it out. We got ourselves like 10 burgers, and we ate those bad boys so quick. And I'm going to have to tell you, sorry to disappoint, but I mean, they really were not all that. Not up to the height, maybe just because I've been hyping them up in my head for like 10 years now since the movie came out. But for me, definitely was not worth all the hype. But still, awesome to win at the casinos in Las Vegas and then have like a dozen White Castle burgers. It was a very cool. So it was starting to get a bit late now. We were starting to get a bit tired. It was like two, three o'clock in the morning. So we decided to head back to our car, crash for a few more hours, and then head right back out. But this time, we wanted to check out some of the weed stores that they had in Las Vegas and then go to old Las Vegas, where it kind of looks more like in the movies, those old school, big, flashing, bright lights everywhere. So that's exactly what we did. So at first, you know we had to check out the weed stores. So that's what we did. First, we had to do it. We went to Planet... Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought I showed my name here. We went to Planet 13. Now, as you can see, we all got these little cards here that just, I mean, let you in or something. I don't know. Let's see what it says on here. Really not much. So I'll just show you what it says here. These are the little cards they give you to get into Planet 13. And it is just a huge, huge place. I've never been to a weed store that big. And that's because this is going to be the biggest weed store in North America, I think. Don't quote me on that. Maybe Google it. But it was just awesome. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Everything there was so expensive. They had like $20, $30 grams. They had like $150 grams of concentrate. They had like a thousand dollar gold canagar it was way too expensive now that's not to say that their flour wasn't good my friend actually purchased a gram for 25 dollars and it was amazing flour 25 us mind you so about 35 canadian absurd prices although it was one of the best flowers I've ever tried in my life, I still could never justify spending that kind of money. And like, unless I just won uh, tons of money at the casino, which I mean, I definitely didn't, there was no way I was going to be spending any money there. But just look at all the beautiful flower they have. I mean, tons of variety, so many different kinds all over this place. This is just one of the little drawer, desk, uh, show-off counter things that they had. But they had so much different flower. It was nuts. They even had this beautiful, beautiful, crazy expensive gold blunt. Just look at that bad boy. I've never seen anything like it. So after not buying anything at the expensive Las Vegas Planet One, whatever they call it, Planet 13 weed store, we decide, I mean, we have to try at least one other one because we clearly can't afford this one and aren't going to buy anything there. So we go to New Leaf, this awesome other little head shop where they give out these cool little 
uh, I mean, uh, geez, why can't I think of the word? Matches. They came out these little matches. And then we also got this magazine. Now, I'm pretty sure that that's where I got it. I can't 100% remember just because it has been a few weeks now. But awesome magazine with all these cool pictures inside. All this cool information. So very cool to have this as a nice souvenir. Because like, I don't really like the magnets and the stickers and the shirts and all that kind of junk. But a nice Vegas cannabis magazine is absolutely awesome. So super stoked to have that. Unfortunately, the flower, again, was still too expensive for us. There's no way we're going to be spending that kind of money on flour. So we ended up keep going through these bad boys. We just looked around and we decided to go straight to the old Vegas just to see exactly what that looked like because later on in that night, I was flying home. It was the end of the trip. So we drove to it, we took a taxi because, I mean, we wanted to have a nice little party for our last night. So we rolled up a few and we headed on to Old Vegas. And right as we pull up on the left, you could see the, the typical Four Queens sign that we see in all the movies. It was absolutely amazing. Exactly what I wanted to see right off the bat the second we get out of the taxi just beautiful colors and lights and sounds and it was just overwhelming and of course because we were stupid and we didn't know better we lit up a joint right there we smoked before going into the casinos and i'm so glad that we didn't know we weren't allowed and more importantly i'm so glad we didn't get in trouble because it was awesome so we spent a few more hours in the casinos going around gambling checking out the different machines which ones we liked which ones we felt good juju we felt bad juju from so after a few more hours of gambling in the old vegas we went outside we finished off the rest of our flour that we had and we headed off to the airport because it was finally time to head home and although I had such a blast, so much fun on this trip, I was definitely ready to head home. Because just being in my own bed, being in a real bed and not sleeping on a stupid car chair for weeks on end just sounded amazing. Taking a shower, brushing my teeth, washing my hands, just the small things. Uh, I could not have been more excited to go home. So we get to the airport. Unfortunately, when I get there, my plane was delayed a little bit, so I did have to wait. But good for me, they had even more. They had like a mini casino in the airport. So I lost another $20 there. I went to Wendy's, had a burger, and finally caught my plane home. So excited finally got home now it was like minus 20 when i got home so a huge shot coming from las vegas going all the way back to canada to minus 20 but i was stoked to be home for sure so that's going to be the end of it smoking cannabis on our road trip all across North America and it was an absolute blast. I really hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope to see you on the next video when we go right back to our regular programming. So that's been this week's episode of Canadian Cannabis. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you next week and as always peace and love. Cheers!